Okay, welcome everybody to Girl Guides Online for five to nine year olds. Um, my name's Ren, I'm here with you this afternoon and also my friend Bree. And we've got a special visitor today, Kanga, who's been um, presenting some of the meetings recently. She's got some really exciting news for you today. You might have heard this news already because your parents would have got an email. But we've asked Katrina or Kanga, who's our state commissioner, to come and share this really exciting news with you. Okay, hi guys. Um, thanks, Ren. Thanks, Bree. Well, I do have some very exciting news, and you guys might be the first to know online. So I hope you spread it far and wide that because we've been so great here in WA, the state government has said that we now can go back to guiding. How exciting is that? So we need a little bit of time to get ourselves ready. So the magical date for us in WA is the 15th of June. Now I need you to just keep um, in mind that your leaders will contact mum, dad and, and your loved ones to let them know when they will come back. We've got a few things that we need to do to make sure our halls are safe and that you guys are safe but the big date is the 15th of June, so that you can all go back and see your guiding friends. I just wanted to take this little time to just say that we've been so lucky having these leaders help us with guiding online, but there's some things that we might need you to do when you go back to face-to-face -to -face guiding, so we can all stay nice and safe, and we won't ever have to not do our guiding weekly again. So there's four Kanga tips to keeping COVID safe. So I would love you to make sure that I know you all do, is that you listen to your leaders when you get back and I'll have some new rules that we have to follow. I'll need you to keep washing your hands every time that you come into the unit, every time you finish an activity. And I know that you all know our great um, campfire song, Kookaburra Lives in the Old Gum Tree. So I need you to be singing that while you wash your hands nicely for when you start back at guides. We need to try and stay a little bit apart just for a little while longer. So we're going to try and stay our 1.5 or arm's length away, just so we stay nice and safe. So I know you'll all be dying to hug all your guiding friends when you get back and high five and everything, but maybe we're just going to have to do the elbow bump for a little bit longer. When we go into our guide ring, we might have to keep our hands to ourselves for a little while and not hold hands but I know your leaders will keep reminding you and I know you guides will be great at doing that. The last one of Kanga's four COVID safe tips is if you're not feeling great or someone in your family is not feeling great, I know you love coming to guides, but can you just stay home that week just so we know that you're safe and that everyone else in the unit. And I've made lots of new guiding friends doing guiding online. So I'd love to hear how you're all going when you get back drop me an email, send me a poster, invite me to your unit. I would love to come and say hi. So I'll give you back to Ren and Bree. They've got an amazing guide online for you tonight. So we're all back. Well done on doing what everyone has told us to do. And I can't wait to see us back in guiding on the 15th of June. Thanks Thank you, everyone. Kanga. Thanks. Thanks so much, Kanga, our State Commissioner. That is such good news. I'm sure you're all really excited. I know Bree and I are excited to get back to our Girl Guides as well. So it's really exciting news. Okay, so this is what's going to happen in our meeting this afternoon. First thing, we're going to play a little reveal game. So in a minute, I'll, I'll tell you what's going to happen so you know what's happening throughout the whole meeting. In a minute, Bree is going to put up a reveal picture. And as the, the little parts of the picture come off, I want you to type in the chat and see if you can guess what the picture is, what's under the, under the chat. Once it's right to the end of the picture, we'll have a look at the chat and see how you went with guessing what's under there. After our reveal game, we're gonna have a story. So Bree is gonna tell us a story about a special little girl and during the time that the story is being read, we're going to turn the chat off so you can concentrate on the story being read. Okay, after the story's been read, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our promise and law just very quickly. Then we're going to have some more reveal games and then it will be time to end our meeting. Okay, so over to you, Bree. What's our first reveal picture? Thanks. 
All right, let's see. Uh, well, that's that's the reveal. That's for them to guess. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's see. Mm. Share screen. Ring run. Okay, I think. Ooh. Can you guys see my screen? Mm -hmm. Okay. First square up. <laughs> okay, so type it into the chat when you think you know what the picture is. We're going to have to wait here. Hmm. I can see something. And what is it going to be? I see green, I see fur. Something else. Hmm, this is tricky, Brie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Something that's furry. I can't see a long tail. I can't see big E. Oh! I think I know. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. Who said Let's quokka? see the chat. <laughs> oh, I see so many quackas. Yes. That, that was a quacka. Some great yes. ideas, girls. Wallabies, yes. quokka, cats, mouse. All sorts of see, things. Also, I see also a raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> well, Some you know, guesses. at the beginning, because at the beginning you couldn't see much of it. So mm. yeah, good guessing, guys. Okay. Should we have one more before our story break? Yeah, sure. Okay. All right, let's see. Um bear with me, guys. <laughs> okay. And um, let's show swap. There you go. Hmm. That isn't fairy. See some colors. Maybe. The same boats, tents, a canoe. <laughs> oh, there's a few more tents. <laughs> My girl, guys, are smart. <laughs> Kayak. Oh, they're, they're very clever, Bray. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, someone said a koala. <laughs> the forest. Yes. And tent in the woods, tent, lots of good ideas. <laughs> yes. I think they're on to us, Brie. A tent. Yes. Oh, they and I don't know about you girls, but I can't wait to go camping again. And I'll look forward to hearing the news about when we can start doing that again, because that is one of my absolute favourite girl guiding yeah. things to do, is getting outdoors and camping. What about you, Kanga? <laughs> She likes to come and visit us when we're camping, don't you? <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to just stop the chat. Um, Sasha's just going to turn the chat off for us so we can listen and concentrate on the story that Bree's going to tell us. Okay, okay. so thanks, Bree. I'm really looking forward to this. So I will be sharing my screen with you, girls, so you'll be able to see the pictures and uh, read alongside with me if you want. Um, let me share my screen again. Okay, well, we are done with this. Okay, okay. so settling, girls, get comfy, and we're going to listen to this really cool, yeah. fun story. Okay, can you see my screen, Lynn? I can. Good, wonderful. Oh, the story is called Here Comes Trouble and it's by Tessa Kraling. Chapter 1. On Friday afternoon, class 7 had an art lesson. It was the favorite lesson of the week. Everyone looked forward to it. Everyone except to Trudy Hubble. Trudy had elbows that stuck out and knocked things over. Her hands were large and clumsy. 
Her feet were so big, she was always tripping over things. When she came into the classroom, Rob Mason said, look out, here comes trouble. This was Rob's idea of a joke. He called her Trouble because it sounded like her two names, Trudy Hubble, put together. The other kids laughed. Trudy had to smile and pretend she didn't mind, but she did mind. She minded a lot. Mrs. Weston said, sit down, Trudy. Let Lisa bring you a water jar and some paints and don't move out of your seat unless you must. Trudy knew why Mrs. Weston wanted her to sit down. Mrs. Weston had been a teacher for three months now. She had seen what happened when Trudy tried to do art. It was always a disaster. Lisa Gibbs fetched paper and paint and brushes. She put them on the table she shared with Trudy. Next, she filled a jar with water and took that to Trudy. Before she sat down, she moved her chair as far away from Trudy as possible. Trudy wished she could be more like Lisa. Lisa never knocked things over. She had small hands and feet and wavy brown hair. Trudy's hair was as stray as a straw. Now today, Mrs. Weston said, I'd like you to pay me a monster. The scarier monsters, the scariest monster you can think of. Oh, great! Class 7 loved painting monsters. Trudy decided to start with the eyes. The eyes were the scariest part of any monster. She dipped her brush in red paint and then she made two large red circles on the paper. Then two large yellow circles and then two large green circles. But it didn't look like much like a monster. It looked more like two sets of traffic lights. So she glanced at Lisa's picture. Lisa had painted a beautiful green dragon with flamings coming out of its mouth. Trudy sighed. She reached out to deeper brush in some black paint and, oh no, she knocked over the jam jar. Dirty water spread in a pool across the table and it drowned Lisa's dragon. Oh, sorry, Trudy muttered. Lisa stared down at her soggy picture and tears came into her eyes. Rob Mason came over to look. Hey, Mrs. Weston, he called. Come see what Trudy's done now. Trudy went red in the face. I'll get a cloth, she muttered. She jumped to her feet and crash, her chair, her chair fell over backwards. She turned round and her paintbrush caught Rob Mason across the face. He gave him a droopy black mustache. He was so surprised that he staggered back against the wire bookstand. The bookstand came crashing down and books went all over the floor. Oh no, Mrs. Weston came hurrying over. She caught a leg on Trudy's chair and lathered her thighs. Disaster! I hate heart, Trudy thought as she went home on the bus, and I hate school. She wished she never had to go to school again. The bus stopped outside her house. She jumped up from her seat and her elbow knocked a woman's hat right over her eyes. Oopsie, sorry. She got off the bus and ran indoors. As soon as she opened the door, she knew something was wrong. The house was too quiet. Not a sound from the kitchen, not a sound in the hall. Mom, she called. Mom, where are you? I'm upstairs, Trudy. Mom's voice sounded strange, all hoarse and croaky. Trudy went upstairs two at a time and she opened the bedroom door. Huh? Achoo! Mom lay in bed holding a box of paper hankies. I've got an awful cold, she said. Don't come too close or you might catch it. Okay, Trudy stayed near the door. Shall I make you a mug of tea? And mom said quickly, no, no, thanks. I'll wait till your dad gets home. Trudy sighed. She knew why mom didn't want her to make any tea. She was afraid Trudy would spill it coming upstairs. But there is something I'd like you to do. What's that? Trudy asked eagerly. Take a message to Miss Willow. Tell her I shan't be well enough to come to work tomorrow. 
and mom blew her nose into a paper hanky. She's a very old lady and I don't want to give her my cold. I'll go straight away. So Trudy turned to the door. Thanks. Oh, but Trudy, um, yes, mom, Trudy stopped. Miss Willow House is full of beautiful things. I have to be very, very careful not to break anything. So if she asks you to come in, you better say no. <sighs> Trudy sighed, yes, ma'am. She went downstairs again and ran along the crowded street. Oops, sorry, she said as she bumped into a passerby. Luckily, she didn't have far to go. Mrs. Willow lived in a tall, graceful old house. Trudy knocked on the door and waited. She heard the top tap of a stick coming from inside and the door opened. There stood an old lady with white hair and sharp blue eyes. Although she walked with a stick, she was tall and graceful like her house. Hello, Mrs. Willow, said Trudy. I'm Trudy Hubble. My mom's your home help. She won't be able to come tomorrow because she got a cold. I'm sorry to hear that. What she needs is my special cold cure. Come inside and I'll give you some, Mrs. Willow opened the door wider. But Trudy remembered her mother warning. I'll wait here, she said. Nonsense, you can wait in my sitting room. Mrs. Willow turned and started to walk down the hall, a stick tap tapping on the floor. Oh, help, thought Trudy, what should she do? Come in, come in, called Mrs. Willow. Trudy took a deep breath and stepped inside. Trudy looked around Mrs. Willow's sitting room. She saw at once why mom had been worried. There were beautiful things everywhere, pretty china figures and little glass animals, delicate tea sets and glass balls. But the most beautiful thing of all stood alone on a little table. It was a large green and white vase with a dragon painted on the side. Trudy stood very, very still. She was afraid to move in case she knocked something over. Stiff as a statue, she kept her elbows pressed to her sides. Mrs. Willow came back into the room. Ah, I see you looking at my chi Chinese vase, she said. It's very, very old. Do you like it? And Trudy nodded. Mrs. Willow held out a small brown bottle. Here's my cold cure, she said. Don't ask me what's in it. It's an old family secret, but it always works. Trudy took the bottle. She couldn't speak because she was still holding her breath. And Mrs. Willow looked hard at her. It's something wrong? Trudy shook her head. But you've got quite red in the face. Are you sure you're all right? Trudy could hold her breath no longer. She let it out in a long, long sigh. <sighs> I'm fine, she said. Thanks for the cold cure, Mrs. Willow. I must go home now. Mrs. Willow looked sad. Can't you stay for a cup of tea? No, I, I have to go. Trudy couldn't wait to get away. The room was too full of beautiful things. Any minute now, there would be a disaster. She felt sure. She turned to the door. Something fairy brushed against her leg. Trudy jumped backwards. The furry thing gave a loud yell and leaped on the piano. Trudy jumped again sideways. Her elbow hit the green and white vase and it began to sway. She watched in horror as it rocked from side to side to side to side to side to side and crash. It fell to the floor and broke into little pieces. A disaster. Nobody moved. The cat, who had caused all the trouble, sat on top of the piano. It swished its tail. Then Trudy say, oh, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. It's because I'm clumsy. That's why I didn't want to come into your house. I knew something would get broken. It always does when I'm around. It's all right, Mrs. Willow said calmly. It doesn't matter. Surprise Trudy stared at her. Doesn't matter? Not a bit. You see, that vase has been broken before. 
I had to, it had to be mended then. And do you know who broke it? Mrs. Willow smiled. I did, when I was just about your age. Yes, I used to be clumsy too. Trudy couldn't believe it. Mrs. Willow seemed so tall and graceful. She didn't look the sort of person who would knock things over. You couldn't have been as clumsy as I am, she said. I am the clumsiest person in our school. Mrs. Willow took a photo from the top of the piano. Do you see this girl playing tennis? She asked. Well, that was me. And Trudy looked at the photo. The girl playing tennis was tall and thin with untidy hair. She had a wide grin on her face. Mrs. Willow laughed. I was a real ugly duckling, wasn't I? But do you remember what happened to the ugly duckling? Trudy nodded. It grew up to be a swan, but I don't think I shall. I'll just grow up to be an ugly duck. Not if you do as I did. You have to keep telling yourself that inside, where it matters, you're really as one. Go on, say it now. And Trudy said doubtfully, I'm as one? It does work, you know. It's a kind of magic. Say it again, this time, as if you really believe it. So Trudy cleared her throat and she said it louder. <clears throat> I'm a swan. That's better, Mrs. Willow smiled. Now help me clear these bits of old base, then we'll have some tea. They drank tea from china cups. They ate chocolate cake off delicate plates. And Trudy didn't break another thing. She ran home muttering, I'm a swan, I'm a swan. And she didn't bump into a single person. So perhaps it was a kind of magic after all. But what would happen tomorrow when she went to school? Next morning, mom's call was much better. That's because of Mrs. Willow's secret family cure, Trudy said. It tastes horrible, said mom, but it seems to work. Trudy was glad that the cold cure had worked. It proved that Mrs. Willow knew what she was talking about. And if the cold cure worked, then this one cure might work as well. She couldn't wait to try it out. On the way to school, she tried thinking herself as a swan. She glided on the bus and sat down slowly. She didn't trip over anyone's feet. She didn't knock anyone's hat off. When the bus stopped, she rose slowly from her seat. She stepped on the pavement. It was surprising how different she felt, so tall and graceful. In the school playground, some children stood looking up into the chestnut tree. Look out, here comes trouble, called Rob Mason when he saw her. Trudy pretended not to hear him. She saw that Lisa Gibb was in, tear, in tears. What's the matter? She asked. It's Lisa's kite, said Rob. It got stuck up the tree. Rob did it, Lisa said, wiping her eyes. He let go and it flew up in the tree. Rob looked a bit ashamed of himself. Super old kite, he muttered. It's a beautiful old kite, said Lisa. I got it for my birthday. It was my best present and she began to sob again. Don't cry, Trudy said kindly. I'll get it down for you. I'm good at climbing trees. Lisa looked horrified. No, you theory, it's only made of paper. Can somebody else get it down? But nobody else wanted to climb the tree. So Trudy jumped up and grabbed the lowest branch. She swung herself up and began to climb. Be careful, called Lisa. It's a special Chinese kite. It costs a lot of money. Like the vase, Trudy thought, and nearly stopped. But then she thought of Mrs. Willow. I must won. I must won, she muttered. And she started climbing again. She climbed higher and higher until she reached the kite. The kite was caught on a sharp twig. It was made of thin, silky paper, and it had a green dragon painted on it. Don't rush, she told herself. Swans never rush. At last, she managed to free the kite, but now she had to climb down again using only one hand. It took her ages, but she didn't rush. She saw that Mrs. Weston had joined the crowd below, but she still did not rush. Very, very carefully, she swung herself down to the ground. The kite was safe. Thanks, Trudy, Lisa showed to the others. Look, it's all right. 
She didn't teary after all. Trudy felt very, very proud. But then Mrs. Weston said, Trudy Hubble, what a mess you look. Your hands and knees are filthy. Go and wash them at once. For a moment, Trudy felt like her whole clumsy self. But then she remembered what Mrs. Willow had said. It didn't matter how she looked outside because inside she was really as one. Trudy smiled at Mrs. Weston and then she glided one like across the playground and into the school. The end. Yay. Beautiful. It's a really lovely story. Thank you, Ray. No okay, we might open the chat up again, please. And you guys can tell us what you thought of that story. And I'm going to share something with you. First of all, I've got a really cute swan that I like to share. She's pretty graceful, but maybe when she was a little signet, she wasn't so graceful. Okay, and I'm going to share a little bit of our promise and law with you because I think there's something in that story that really made sense to me and sometimes when we listen to what other people say about us maybe it's not really the truth maybe what other people say isn't real and maybe what we believe about ourselves maybe that's the truth and when when Trudy started believing that she was a swan and she didn't believe all the things that other people said about her she changed because her thoughts were more important to her than what other people were saying. Okay, so I'm going to share something with you. Um, bear with me. So, there, there you can see our promise and law. And there's lots of things that I could relate to in the picture in, in that story. And one was respecting herself and others, being friendly to other people, because that boy wasn't very friendly to Trudy when he kept calling her names and saying that she was clumsy. And being thoughtful and optimistic was a good one. But I really like live with courage and strength because Trudy kept on trying once she realised that she was a swan really inside and it didn't matter what people were saying. She just started being a whole different person and being really courageous and strong in her life. And I thought that was, was a really amazing thing. And a lot of things that we do at Girl Guys as well. Okay, so. I know Everyone I is so do. welcome because <laughs> I see a lot of guys thanking me and you guys are very welcome it was a pleasure reading for you <laughs> um, okay i yeah. want to show you a little quick video about girl guides <laughs> oh my god <laughs> uh before we go and then we're going to play another couple of rounds i'm going to leave the chat open you can chat away while you watch this little video and this i hope will remind us about some of the things that we do at guides okay hang on girls bear with me because i'm still learning we're just about at the end of all our our things here and i am going to share this with you It's a whole new experience. It's really good to learn about things and how to help people. You just feel like you're at home already. Like there's nothing to be scared of. Everyone just makes you welcome and everything. I think girls like to be involved in an all girl environment. They just like to hang out with other girls and just be girls, be however they want to be. The change in the kids is incredible. The amount of fun she has, the friends she has, the adventures she goes on, it's absolutely worth it. I believe that it's the most wonderful organisation for the girls. There's 10 million of us around the world. It gives the girls lots of opportunities to be girls, but also to be able to be independent, to learn leadership skills and to work together as uh, teams. It's changed my life, being part of it for my whole life. I've learned things that I don't think I would have learned otherwise. I've had experiences I would never have dreamed of having. The leaders 
Teachers are amazing. They help us. They do anything to get us through Girl Guides and be strong, confident young women. If they weren't here to help me, I wouldn't be here right now. And I want to thank them for that. I had a great experience as guides. I was a very quiet, very shy, very retiring little girl and then all of a sudden I became a patrol leader and I was in a leadership role. I've gone on to other leadership roles in my life since then with confidence and it all comes back to what I did in guides back in those very early days when I was about a, an 11 year old girl. I think I'll be a leader someday because I learn a lot of things from my leaders and have a lot of fun. I think it's really good in making new friends, being taught how to make friends, being introduced to the outback. It makes them a lot stronger physically and mentally. It's a very inclusive, safe environment where they are pushed to do things that they might otherwise not feel confident to do, but they are very supported and it's a lovely community to be involved in. Girl guiding gives young women an opportunity to develop their confidence, their capacity to plan and do incredible things. And they'll all tell you that, you know, being with girl guides allows them to think big about what they can achieve. It almost doesn't matter what your girls are interested in. There's such a variety of activities you can do for girl guides. It's a really structured, great way for them to make new friends, learn new skills and have fun. I feel like that girl guides is now my family. So, I hope you like that. And I thought it might remind us of all the things that we haven't been able to do the last few months. Getting out there camping and canoeing and being in the outdoors, which is one of our things that we really like to do. So, I hope you like that. And in some, you know, in some ways, Lynn, this uh, this uh, situation that happened, we it's true we were not able to go to our unit meetings, but I've met so many more guides than I would ever have, and you know because we are very a big family, so uh, we try to find a positive in the negative. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Okay, Bree, why don't we have a couple more games to finish off? Sure thing. All right, let me see. Let's see, we have, we have six, so. <laughs> okay. I think we'll probably be able to get through them. Mm. Glad you enjoyed the video and thanks Bree for the story. We've had a great time this afternoon. I don't want to end, let's, oh, okay. Here's another picture girls. Let's okay. see what this is gonna uh, be. Swap, there you go. Hmm. So remember, type in the chat as it starts to reveal and let us know what you think it is. I don't remember <laughs> them all. <laughs> I made them, but I don't remember what they are. Hmm. Okay, I think some of our guys got it. <laughs> yeah. A few of you, oh, there's someone, someone wrote the, the right word there. A few people are writing the Girl <laughs> Guide logo and the Girl Guide symbol. There's a special word for it that starts with T. Yeah. Somebody got it. Yeah. A few people more get it. Excellent. That's right. It's a trefoil. Yes. Three, three little, it looks sort of like a, a clover leaf, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Three parts of the promise. Awesome. Yes. Okay. Well done, girls. A lot of you have got that one. Okay. Yes, very well What's done. What's our next one, Bray? Okay. Um, okay. Let me set it up before I share again. <laughs> so I don't want to spoil the game for you. <laughs> I wonder if anyone can tell me. Here's a really tricky question. Do you see that gold star in the trefoil? I wonder if anybody knows what that stands for what that represents. This little star here. Yeah, the little gold, the little star. It's white on our shirts. Anybody know what that represents? Southern Cross, no. Mm. Units in the world, good, good guess Layla, but not quite. Eva, I like it. I think 
it is friendship, but it does represent something in particular. Sophie says Australia, and that is very, very close. Our star flag, mm, yes, and it's for a certain reason. Yep, girls, that <laughs> awesome. It represents the seven states and territories of Australia. So if you count around that star, you'll see there's seven points on the star. So that's for the states and territories of Australia. So there you go. Okay. Okay, ready. Ready, Brie. Let's have another game. Okay. Swap. It's purple. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hmm. Mm. I wonder what this one is. You're trying to trick a spray. Oh. Mm, parrot. Mm. I want to see a little bit more of it. Good guesses, girls. Lots of guesses coming in. Oh, I saw someone got it. Keep going, though. You people are getting it now. Oh. <laughs> really great guesses, girls. <laughs> yeah, lots of people were saying rainbow lorikeets because of the really colourful feathers. Good try though, but yeah, it's a macaw. They're a beautiful bird. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry guys, that, that just disappeared on my screen. But yeah, it no. was a macaw bird. Yeah. It was a macaw bird. Do we have any more break? We've got a yes. little bit of time. We have we have two more. Oh, I think we've got time for them. That's great. Okay. Um great guesses, girls. You're doing really well. Those it's really the answers are just coming in in the chat. Really nice next time I'm gonna make them harder. <laughs> <laughs> They're too clever for us, Bree. Mm -hmm. They're too smart, these girls. Goodness me. Okay. Hmm. I wonder what this one is. Oh, I think I know. Something that's it's very so Australian, right. isn't it? It's also, yeah. Australian I have to say, the first time that I had this lean, it was our ice block sliding, a girl guides. <laughs> I never had it before. <laughs> so that's why actually why why we put that one in, Brie, because at our girl guide unit, we had Brie is one of our awesome unit helpers and another girl called Azzy. And they're both from other countries from overseas so Brie who's been helping us tell us what country you come from Brie. I am Italian. Okay and Brie uh, and Azzy comes from Malaysia I believe. Yes she does. So they had never had fairy bread before and our girl guide thought it was really amazing that they were grown-ups and they had never had fairy bread. So we introduced yeah. them to one of our um, favorite Aussie snacks of fairy bread mm, yeah. <laughs> at our meeting so you never know there's lots of people around well, that haven't the, tried lots of another things. fellow Italian among guides Olivia <laughs> good to know <laughs> yes it was fairy bread very well done and so for, for the last one um let's see okay I think I can close this one no Okay, let me share my screen again. Okay, last one, girls. Let's wonder and see what this one is. I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, now I remember. <laughs> Mm. 
Okay, you are right. There, there is a lake and there is trees. Something in the front that we can't quite see yet. A bit of a clue in the top. Ah. Uh, <laughs> oh, done everyone. Lots of lots of people getting it. Yep, it's a campfire. Fire pit campfire. One of my favourite things to do when we go camping in the right time of year, obviously not in summertime in Perth, but when we can have a campfire. I love having a campfire. So we hope you've enjoyed our Girl Guides online meeting uh, today. Next time, smaller squares. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're too clever for us, Brie. They're too yeah. clever. So that was awesome. And I'm so glad Kanga was here today to share our exciting news. And we have to remember Kanga's four things when we go back to our meetings. But I am so excited to be seeing the girls in, in our unit and seeing you guys out and about at events hopefully in the coming months. So I'm um, really glad that you were here, whether it's you've been coming along to the meeting for a while or this is your first meeting. We've got one more online meeting next week and you'll see Kanga there again. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much for coming along. We hope you enjoyed our meeting today. Thank you, Brie. I really like the story. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> and it's great to see you all. Bye, so, guys. Thanks so much. See you Bye. next week. Bye-bye. See you next time.